So this is the story of how I lost over 100 pounds, but it's probably not gonna be the story that you're expecting. I'm gonna talk about how I exercised and how I trained and how my life evolved and changed while I was trying to lose weight and a load of the regrets that I have about that. I'm gonna go through the good and the bad. And the reason that I wanna talk about this in a more lengthy video is so that I can warn other people off what I did. But I need to start at the beginning. So the reason I started CrossFit, or the reason I got into fitness in the first place was because I was experiencing severe mental health issues. I had just got a diagnosis of bipolar disorder, I was suicidal, I had gained a lot of weight because I've had struggles with food throughout my life and when times get really hard I often have a tendency to turn towards food and specifically binge eating. I had struggled with that and with body image and body dysmorphia since I was a teenager and when my mental health got so much worse I didn't realise how much I was turning to food and alcohol in order to numb that pain that I was going through. After I got my diagnosis the doctors were trying me on lots of different medications whilst I was in between those one of the things that they told me to do was to try and add in some healthy habits at the time I didn't really exercise at all and I was eating really unhealthily I didn't I wasn't eating like your five a day I wasn't eating vegetables I wasn't eating enough protein my diet consisted of mostly cheesy pasta and chocolate my problem was at that stage I really didn't care about myself intensely disliked myself in a way and I intended to pursue fit and health. So at the beginning, mental and physical health were my main goals. It had nothing to do with changing my body or any of that. I was just trying to escape this reality where all I was feeling was either mania or depression all of the time. And I wanted to help my mental illness by getting more physically healthy. A brand new CrossFit gym opened up near us and I'd already done a little bit of weightlifting in the gym at home. And I really enjoyed it and I thought, why don't I go and have a go at CrossFit and see if I enjoy it? I was addicted after the first day, I just found so much joy in the high intensity and the weightlifting. It was also a community, which was something that I was massively missing while struggling with my mental illness. I needed to be around people and I needed to move my body and I needed to pursue health. I wish I could have remembered that. <laughs> I wish I kept that mindset, but I didn't. And this is where it all started to go wrong. Naturally, as I started eating healthier and going to the gym, I started to lose weight. I got a lot of encouragement from losing weight. And then of course, because of the societal pressure, I felt that I was not healthy in a larger body and that I had to lose weight in order to get healthy. So I started to intensely pursue weight loss. And to begin with, I did it in the most unhealthy way possible. I tried like keto and paleo. Then I also tried a really aggressive calorie deficit where I was on about 1,200 calories a day training like six to seven times a week so I got so addicted to CrossFit so quickly and so wrapped up in that atmosphere I started competing my first two months into CrossFit I was just obsessed you know what CrossFit's like you want to get better at CrossFit when you start to go to a CrossFit gym that somehow becomes the main goal is you're going to be better at CrossFit all of these messages within CrossFit about eating no sugar some really rigid diet rules around food there's something in the fitness in 100 words that says eat amounts that don't support body fat and I took that as a very literal person very literally thinking that I should have no body fat in the end I lost over 100 pounds and that all happened within the first six months of CrossFit. I just received endless praise for this, how amazing everybody thought I was because I'd lost so much weight and I'd lost it so quickly and every time I lost more and more weight I got more and more compliments. Every time I got leaner and they could see more of my abs I got more external validation, more approval but it still didn't feel good, I still wanted to be thinner looking back at the size that I was, I was tiny. And I think I was way under the weight that my body should naturally sit at. My entire life started to be consumed by what food I was eating. I was obsessively tracking every bit of food that went into my mouth. I was weighing everything. I was bringing Tupperware to places where there was free food. And I'd stick to really rigid foods as well. So I would only eat one particular brand of chicken sausages. If the food came from somewhere else and I hadn't scanned the barcode into the app, I would massively stress out and spend that whole evening stressing that the input that I put in for my calories was wrong. The training had got so out of hand as well. I was doing double days and frequently like seven days a week and I wasn't taking any rest days at all because CrossFit had become my community. I just really loved being around people and that's what I felt like I needed. It had become an outlet. 
I really struggled to take time off that. There would be a barbell class on a Sunday and I'd always find myself there. I hadn't recognized that my body needed to recover and that I needed to take that time off. Through this process of obsessing over food, obsessively training, I didn't realize that I was getting sick with my food related illness again and that it had just changed to adapt to this new fitness landscape that I was in. And the problem was the fitness industry excessively encourages this kind of behavior that I I was doing the extreme dedication to my sport you can just scroll through Instagram and see like you don't want it bad enough you need to give it everything you've got you need to sacrifice everything for your health but that's not healthy really restricting my foods not allowing myself to eat fun foods at parties or then binging because I had been restricting using exercise as an outlet to the point where it became self-harm a lot of the time not only was it really unhealthy but it was causing some serious damage to my relationship with food and my relationship with exercise that would affect me for years and years after that started and I completely lost sight of why I started I started to improve my mental and physical health and in the end I just ended up more sick but I was sick in a different way. I wasn't battling depression or my bipolar disorder in the extreme way that I was before but I felt like I was constantly on this hamster wheel this hamster wheel of trying to get better at CrossFit, get thinner, get leaner to prove to everybody around me that I was healthy <laughs> but I wasn't healthy what I thought was community that I had found was actually just another way of numbing my feelings and running from my mental health issues. And I kept shaming myself that I should be happy because I had all of these external achievements. I was finally thin. I finally fit the beauty standard. I was finally performing well at CrossFit. I was getting muscle ups and I could lift a good, a decent amount. I can lift more now. And I was, absolutely smashing competitions. There was one year I did 13 competitions and podiumed 11 of them. But there was still this like desperation. I didn't, <laughs> it's so crying. <sighs> I didn't understand why I wasn't happy when I was standing on top of the podium or smashing through my CrossFit goals. I'd just been sold this idea by the fitness industry that when you get thin, when you get lean, and when you get good at the sport that you're trying to be good at, that you'll be happy. And that wasn't true. I just sacrificed so much of my life, damaged so much of my relationship with food, just to fit in this box, this body type. I dug myself into a hole and the fitness industry and society and people around me had praised me while I got there. Like I was doing the right thing, but I was doing so much damage to myself. And there are so many other people out there exactly like me that are currently trying to get healthy, but actually are pursuing thinness and overtraining. And they're doing the same damage that I've done to my health. There was a point where I, because I'd stopped eating carbohydrates, that I started to fall asleep, even if I'd eaten a carrot. <laughs> and I ended up with reactive hypoglycemia, and my doctor told me that I needed to stop doing that. So many issues with electrolyte imbalances, and I had issues as a teenager with like infrequent fainting due to my electrolyte imbalance, which is obviously another symptom of the food related illness that I have. But that all started happening again and I relapsed multiple times because I'd eaten something that I considered bad and that I shouldn't be eating according to what the fitness industry tells us. The amount of guilt and shame that I would feel if I ate something that I wasn't supposed to was absolutely crushing and it was all I could think about after I'd done it. And the problem was I felt like I had no way out because what were my options? If I started to gain weight again, then people were just gonna criticize me for my body because they would presume that I'm not healthy because they thought that thinness is the epitome of health. At one point, I also lost my period, which can cause infertility and osteoporosis and lots of other complications. And that was because I was too lean and I didn't have enough body fat because I was trying to not support body fat. I had lots of digestion issues. I would only eat whole foods. I'd been scared off processed 
processed foods, which also meant that the energy availability wasn't there. So I didn't have enough energy for my training. And I got to a tipping point where I started to get weaker and I started to get worse at things and I was massively under recovering and something was going wrong. And in a way, CrossFit helped me realize that I was sick again, but in a new way. And that it had gone too far and it got out of control. I had a couple of moments where I realized what was going on and I tried intuitive eating for a little bit and it really worked for me. It was amazing and it was, it felt like a light at the end of the tunnel. But what I hadn't realized was how much I'd actually damaged my relationship with food and that I would shortly relapse after that. And that was also at the same time I ended up on the TV on SAS Who Dares Wins. And during that program, I was starved. Some parts of my trauma resurfaced. And then after I came out, I spiraled back into all of my struggles that I was having before. It was like that little phase where I was feeling better had never happened. And then lockdown happened and the gym was taken away from me. I started to cling to what I was doing. I was overtraining at home. I was road cycling quite a lot and I was still restricting my food. But at this time, I'd also got into a relationship with my current partner. He has the best relationship with training and food that I've ever seen. He's got no food related issues. He rests when he needs to. He trains when he needs to. He doesn't shame himself for doing anything. It was really funny. He introduced me to, <laughs> I can't, the way I realized initially. <laughs> at the start of lockdown, I moved in with him and he had mixed vegetables. <laughs> it's really not funny because it's just a sign of how bad it was and how deep I was in that hole. I freaked out about eating mixed vegetables because how was I possibly going to be able to track that in my calories? <laughs> because all the vegetables are mixed together. There's no way that can happen. And I think a few times I didn't eat it and I just cooked something else. But eventually I realized that that was where something needed to change. And with his help, and a lot of realizations and some therapy, <laughs> I started to dig myself out of this massive hole that I'd made for myself. I started to eat to fuel my body and through lockdown, I gained weight anyway because I couldn't have access to training. My job was super stressful at the time because I still had to go in because I worked in a mental health school and we were all still required to work during lockdown. I was a teacher, so no one else was gonna run the lessons. But it meant that when I came home every night to my very limited equipment, I had no energy to do any kind of workout and then because I was struggling with my PTSD symptoms resurfacing and a load of other mental health stuff I started to go back to the very beginning where I was kind of eating in order to comfort myself and I hadn't realized it started happening and I also started taking medication for my mental health for the PTSD symptoms, which can often lead to weight gain. And this is where the fitness industry reared its ugly head again and continues to do so throughout my life. Even though I should feel like I'm thoroughly part of the fitness industry, I received very quickly, even when I was a very normal body size, a lot of shaming, a lot of people questioning why I was gaining weight. A lot of people commenting on my body, my body fat. Some comments were really direct and just like fat shaming, while other comments were like, oh, you'll lose it eventually, with the picture in their head that thinness is the epitome of health. But I'd just come from there, and I knew that where I was in order to get to that body that they praised so much, I knew that that wasn't healthy. I felt like I was fighting to keep my head above water while still trying to fumble through figuring out how to not diet and not massively restrict myself anymore. And it was really messy. And because of the state of the healthcare system, I didn't get any real support trying to muddle through fixing my relationship with food. And as my exercise had decreased over lockdown, I also realized that my relationship with exercise was really unhealthy and that that needed to change as well. And since then, I've been on a massive journey because I'd strayed so far off the path of actual health and ended up somewhere else in I knew that I had to fix it, even if the entire time I'd be fighting against everything the fitness industry says about health, whilst receiving a lot of hate and a lot of trolling for gaining weight. I had to stop focusing on what other people thought and what the fitness industry thinks that health is and figure out what it actually is for me. <laughs> I 
had to completely start from the beginning again. I had to start eating to fuel my body and making sure that I had enough food so that I could perform and also do the stuff in my life that I enjoy. I stopped restricting and I stopped cancelling events because I was worried about the food that was going to be there. This took a while to get used to. When you've been restricting for a really long time, many of us are prone to stuff like binge eating and emotional eating and I was still massively struggling with my mental health so I definitely did a fair amount of that. And of course that meant that I gained weight and the trolling from people within the fitness industry increased and more and more people were commenting on my body and saying horrible things about my body. But I haven't let that stop me in my attempt to recover. I gained back a lot of the weight that I'd lost, but because my goals were physical and mental health and not to pursue thinness to impress other people and the rest of the fitness industry, I know in myself that what I'm doing is best for me and I've got to allow myself to eat without restriction so that foods become less scary and I'm less likely to binge on those kind of foods because I'm not restricting them out of my life. And the more that I've done that, the more that I've found those foods that I've been restricting that I would obsess over and binge on, I now find them far less interesting. <laughs> and I gained back about 30 kilos initially through lockdown and I haven't lost that weight because I'm not in pursuit of weight loss, I'm in pursuit of health. A calorie deficit and restricting carbohydrates and all of the other methods that I did before are not actually health focused activities. It's just controlled starvation in pursuit of a thin body. And that is not my goal. Thinness does not necessarily equal health. I try and focus on eating enough fruit and vegetables. I'm also working with a guy called Johnny who is an intuitive eating coach. He works with a lot of people that have had issues very similar to me and have been very deep in diet culture and have severely damaged their relationship with food. We're working on a lot of different things around how I approach food and where all of those mechanisms have come from. And it's so much more complex than going on a diet because my body will actively work against me when I do go on a diet, if I will never go on a diet again just doesn't work for me anymore. So we're figuring out what is healthy. Eating like five portions of fruit and veg a day. I eat more than that to be honest because I love fruit and veg. Eating enough protein, getting enough carbs, having a generally healthy balanced diet, working on eating when I'm hungry and stopping when I'm full and for me that is one of the biggest challenges. Through lockdown I had to stop competing because there were no competitions happening and that actually forced me to move away from the competitive side of CrossFit. And of course with the weight gain I was unable to do some of the things that I used to be able to do and I had to work back to getting things like strict pull-ups and handstand push-up. I had to be okay with getting worse at my sport because my goal wasn't being good at my sport anymore which made me look at CrossFit completely differently. Instead of seeing CrossFit as this thing that I must get better at every year I've started to see it as just another fitness class. I've actually reduced my days at the gym down to three now, which is crazy. Initially I started with five and then down to four and I just felt better and better the more I reduced it and the more time I gave my body to recover. And I started to enjoy training a lot more. So that was a pretty tough session in the gym. I say I just do it for fun now, but basically Olympic weightlifting for me, I do, I do just do it for fun. I don't do a huge amount of it now. I probably do like one session a week of like heavy Olympic weightlifting like that. And it did really suck because obviously it is the regular programming. And it's nice to try hard. I think just because I'm now training for me and for health, it doesn't mean that I can't also do stuff that I enjoy and stuff that will get me stronger or get me better. But at the end of the day, most of my training doesn't look like that. And I only do CrossFit three days a week now. So the session we did was basically clean pulls and two hang squat clean built up to like, it was either 85 or 90 kilos. It was quite heavy. And then the workout was disgusting. <laughs> we had like four minutes of bike work, three minutes of wall balls, two minutes of like 
dumbbell burpees, one minute of box jumps, and my hamstrings were so fried from the rowing that I've done previously in the week, because I've added in a couple of like rowing sessions and some other stuff that I just enjoy, that isn't really CrossFit, like I did a 7K this week. <laughs> so my hamstrings are really sore, so on some days that are like, particularly heavy on the posterior train i struggle and today was one of those days <laughs> but it is what it is it's the one of the last days i'll be training until my rest day i've got two rest days coming up as much as i enjoyed that session i'm thankful for a rest day the kind of training that i do now so three days a week of crossfit and then on monday i do like a long distance steady state cardio row and a couple of like strict gymnastics like pull up stuff on the other days i'll go walking or i'll get in the sea or i'll just do something else they're usually things that kind of push me towards like heart health better cardiovascular health just better all-round health rather than like optimal performance and trying to be competitive in a sport and that for me is so much more fulfilling and i'm so much happier now that my training is like that than before when I was trying to reach this like peak level of performance and sacrificing my entire life to get there <laughs> in a very unhealthy way. And then not being happy at the end of it when I stood on the podium. It's a huge change. So it's strange, my goals now, it seems that they're very different since I started CrossFit, but they're actually the goals that I had right at the start. I wanted to get mentally and physically healthier for me and my own well-being. And that's still the exact same goal. I'm just now rejecting everything that the fitness industry tries to make us believe that we need to be doing while we're on our fitness journey, i.e. losing weight and getting a six pack. Since I've trained as a personal trainer myself, I've obviously got over six years experience in the fitness industry now. I know from the inside what it's like to start training and the pressure that everybody can feel to basically sacrifice your entire life and all of your happiness in order to pursue an aesthetic. And that makes me so actively against that, that I've found it comes through in my programming. I've got a lot of clients in my online programs and a lot of them have come from like similar backgrounds to me where they've struggled with exercise, they've gone into that kind of unhealthy mindset, they maybe struggled with food issues and lots of other things that you can fall into when you get into the fitness industry. And that means I get messages from people apologizing when they've missed a day of their program, being really hard on themselves. I constantly have to reiterate that it's okay if life gets in the way of training. The reason that we're doing this is for health and well-being and general fitness <laughs> and it's not to be the absolute best you can be every single day of the week and that we're all gonna have ups and downs. And I'm having these conversations so frequently I just feel like it needs to be more normalized because at the moment the fitness industry can be so damaging to so many people. I just don't want people to go down the same path that I did. If I can stop that from happening and even get people into fitness like I've got a beginner's program. It's all, it's based on functional training, but it's not like CrossFit. There is no kipping pull-ups or Olympic weightlifting. It's written in a way where you're not kind of pushed to punish yourself, <laughs> which sometimes I think every gym is different, but in some CrossFit gyms that can happen. Like the, the narrative is that we need to be going at 100% high intensity every single day. <laughs> and that's not realistic or sensible. Look how pretty my little bowl is. I need some granola, I think. So much fruit. Years ago, I would never even have allowed myself to have granola because of the amount of sugar in it. This one's got chocolate in it. I love it so much. I guess the question really is, have I reached my goals of being more mentally and physically healthy? I definitely have. Like if we view it as a spectrum, maybe I started, if this is like really poor mental and physical health and this is good, when I started here, <laughs> I kind of got a little bit better throughout here and then got a little bit worse again. And then just stayed around that area for so long. But now I'm definitely here. Ish. People will assume differently because obviously I'm in a larger body now and people assume that that means that we're less healthy but that's not accurate at all. My heart rate is lower I think than it's ever been. <laughs> 
it's around like the 50 beats per minute. And I've got no like illnesses or cardiovascular problems or any of that sort of stuff. And mentally, I'm definitely in the best place that I've ever been, but I can still see that there's a bit of a way to go as well. I'm really working on that. The rest of that work is outside the gym and some of it is definitely still around food. I've been having more therapy. I've been going to mental health support groups and most of the time I'm just trying to move the needle more towards this end. And I feel like that's gonna be a lifelong process. There's gonna be stuff that comes up that alters that and makes me slip back a bit. And that's not the end of the world because I now have all of these tools that I can use to help me get there. The fitness industry can sell us this lie that the gym can be a replacement for therapy and I don't think that's true at all. The gym for me, especially during that stage where I was really using the gym to run away from my problems, it was a coping mechanism and I used it in the same way as I had used food, I'd used alcohol, I'd partied. It was an escape. It wasn't actually helping my mental health and acknowledging that for me has made a big difference too. I'm personally just really excited about this next phase of my life where I'm kind of moving on from all of that and I'm finally undoing all of the problems I kind of caused for myself and also the fitness industry kind of caused for me. I mean I'm obviously accountable for my own actions. We have so much work to do in changing the way that we portray peak physical fitness and health. Weight loss doesn't necessarily lead to happiness or health. Neither does training the most that you possibly can. If you clicked on this video because you want to lose weight and you wanted to lose the amount of weight that I have lost, I would totally recommend just trying to go more for those health goals and just trying to exercise more, move your body more, do the things that you want to do and that you will enjoy. If you've enjoyed this video you might want to watch this one next and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!